What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you my first impressions for The Ascent, a cyberpunk action RPG from back in 2021 that I've been meaning to check out for a while now, but have finally gotten around to. Right at the beginning here, I do want to mention that I did get this game for free during an event last December, I believe, but it was not directly from the publisher or anything, but still. As a YouTuber, I need to make you aware of those things. Though, moving on to the actual first impressions, I've got to say what struck me first is that I was actually a little bit wrong about this game in the sense that I thought it was kind of mission-based, or at least that was my understanding of it, when in reality, this game has several very large open levels that you can wander through that will have various missions and allow you to relatively freely explore. And there will be side missions and things like that in this world. But just right off the bat, that surprised me. I was under the impression this was mission based for some reason. Otherwise, we play as an indent or an indentured servant for the corporation that owns us, which is the case of most everyone on the planet of Velis or however it is pronounced. This being a cyberpunk world, it pretty much goes without saying that there are giant mega corporations that own basically everything, including you. However, at the start of the game, the one you work for, the Ascent Group, collapses and goes bankrupt, and much of the story seems to revolve around how you and the other people involved in that mess are coping with that situation, which is certainly a unique take, as the case with these kinds of games normally is that these corporations are all powerful and untouchable, really. So kicking this one off with one just outright going bankrupt is a bit of a surprise, I would say. But very quickly, the game makes it clear that we're sort of a menial worker who's doing the best we can under the circumstances in a dark, gritty, alien-filled cyberpunk dystopia. And from there, the game does a few things that I enjoy and a few that I'm not really sold on. So for starters, the combat is pretty interesting, but it gets simple quickly. So there is a cover-based system where your character can crouch to get under various environmental obstacles as well as use objects as cover, which is nice, and in addition to this, you can shoot high or low while in or out of cover, which allows you to shoot over cover, potentially blocking yourself from all damage or things like that, and that is a fun enough mechanic to interact with. And when you combine that with all sorts of various weapons and some of the cyberpunk augmentations you'll get your hands on, you can have some fun there. However, after playing the game for a few hours, it doesn't really seem like the game ever evolves from that, as most of what you're doing is shooting from either a primary or secondary weapon, which can be one of a variety of weapons, which does give you a little bit of variation, and then you'll also have up to two active skills, in addition to a tactical, which is a sort of charged weapon, usually a grenade of some sort, that will perform a special effect. And while the combat is really fast-paced, that's kind of all there is to it. Now, behind the scenes, it is stat-based. Every time you level up, you'll get three skill points that you can pour into one of several stats, with the max of each stat being 20. Gear can take you past that cap, and you can also find extra skill points out in the world. So progression is mostly upgrading a small amount of gear, including your armor, as well as upgrading the various types of weapons you can find. So relatively simple progression systems combined with a, I would say, relatively simple combat system leads me to believe in the early hours here that it probably doesn't go too much farther than this, especially when any time I move to review a game, which is involved in these first impressions, of course, I look up the rough estimate of how long a game is going to take and a Apparently, this is only like 30 hours to 100%, which kind of goes in line with that assumption, I would say. So while the opening and the combat itself can be pretty fun, it does seem like the kind of thing that's going to get stale a little bit quickly. But on the other hand, we do also have the world of the Ascent, which is pretty remarkable. As I mentioned, a lot of these are very large open areas for you to explore. And while I wouldn't really call it open world per se, you are pretty much free to run around and do what you want. And interacting with this world is pretty fun as well. There are fast Fast travel options available to you via a free train, or you can call a taxi to pay gold, which will take you to one of several points. And you can also hack the world around you. You get a cyber deck by default, which you can also upgrade over the course of the game, which will allow you to hack more and more things, getting into places you probably shouldn't be, or allowing you to do things like hack vending machines for free health pickups, so on and so forth. So for me, the real takeaway is that the combat is okay, but it's probably going to grow stale after a little while, and the world is really impressive. Just walking through here, seeing all the detail and 
just the sort of visual spectacle that is this cyberpunk world has been really satisfying. So to ramp this up and save some for the review, first impressions wise, I was wrong about a few things that I just assumed this game was. Nonetheless, the gameplay, while very fun, feels like it's probably only skin deep, so we'll have to see how that evolves over the course of my playtime. And then on the flip side of that, the world seems incredible to explore and run around in, if for no other reason than the sheer spectacle of it. That is pretty much all I've got for you guys first impressions wise. I sincerely doubt the review for this will take me very long as I've already been playing it for a good bit before you've even seen this video, so it'll likely only take me a few days to actually get to the review before moving on to the next thing. But hope you enjoyed this video. If you did or you're looking forward to the review, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.